someone should walk into your house, not know it's yours, but immediately know it's yours. It's a Victorian terrace on just a quite a normal average street in Birmingham. You kind of get a glimpse in through the window of like a million plants. <laughs> and then when you come through the door, you kind of awash with all this color and um, like playful interiors. And I quite like that little secret surprise. I don't even think my neighbors know. Um, so it's a nice little secret. I moved into the house just before lockdown. So I found myself living alone for the first time with just loads of tester pots. And that's sort of where the shapes came from because rather than just paint a little blob on the wall, why don't I do a gorgeous little circle or a little triangle? And that really helped carve out my aesthetic. The way a curve on a straight wall changes the energy of a space, that's where it's grown from. My design process always starts with the color palette. So I pair all the paints together and just see what works. And then I start to build out into furniture and furnishings and as many plants as I can fit into the space. <laughs> The first room that I painted was the dining room and I actually just painted it all orange with a white ceiling and a blue pitch rail and my family were like, oh my gosh, this is a bit crazy rich. As the shapes developed, I was kind of emboldened by the use of colour and um, it just got more and more dramatic and they were like, okay, now you've officially lost it. But when they finally got to be able to come to see the space after lockdown was lifted, they were like, this is so cool and they're super proud of it and so am I. This is my living room. It was the second place I actually painted in the whole house and it started from the little yellow circle above the fireplace. I just wanted to create like a really defined, like colourful space and then from there I was like, oh, I like colourful circles. <laughs> That's going to be the whole concept for the whole space and then I built this like ruined mural behind me and then just added as much colour as possible. Pink and green is my favourite combo so there's always a pink and green in there somewhere and then I add in see if I, a yellow will work with it or an orange or a lilac and just allow them to speak to me and see where they want to go on the walls. I try to style things in a minimalist way, a maxi minimalist way. So it feels like it's a minimalist approach, but it is secretly maximalist. <laughs> I think because I moved in the house during lockdown, I had to do things by myself. So I've really come at this from a super DIY perspective. I've like built tables, I've done curtains, I've painted the walls. I'm super proud that I've like been able to turn my hand to like most of the features in the house. When I am designing a space, I try not to look at Instagram too much. I think if you start to look at what other people are doing, it can naturally affect the way the, your focus and your inspiration and you start to pick up things that they've done and it becomes a bit of a hodgepodge. One of my favorite spaces is the kitchen. And as I was moving through the rooms and decorating, I thought, it's gonna be a pink and green kitchen. People will probably hate it, but I knew that I had to do it. So I thought I'll spray paint the cabinets, I'll paint the walls pink and green. It was later that I added in the neon light. I was approached by this neon company, I asked if I wanted to design one, and I kind of did this little squiggly doodle of a, a male bust in an archway, and they produced this beautiful neon for me, and it just completely finished off of that space and just adds in like a really cool element to what is otherwise quite a kitsch space. As my Instagram started to grow, um, I think when I hit 7K, I did a post where I was sat in the kitchen smiling and the caption said, it's been my lifelong dream to be sat smiling in my kitchen in World of Interiors. So this is a incredible full circle moment. I can't believe I'm here.